welcome back to my channel. There's this concept in ecology of charismatic megafauna, and it's basically this oversaturation in the conservation field of these like large charismatic animals that attract conservation funding, like pandas and tigers. There's often a lot of animals that get forgotten in that culture of focusing on the large charismatic megafauna. So I brought in two other biologists, wanderlust and future ecologists, to explain what their favorite endangered animals who are a little bit lesser known are and what we can do to protect them. So I will start here. My favorite animal that's a little bit lesser known in the conservation world is the loggerhead shrike. So the loggerhead shrike is actually a really unique bird and the reason why it is unique is because it has carnivorous tendencies. So it's also commonly nicknamed the butcher bird. One thing that makes this animal absolutely insane is, is it will grab its prey and impale them on spikes. So that could be like spikes in barbed wire is a lot of times where you see it or thorns on the side of plants. It will somewhat use that thorn or spike as a tool in order to impale its prey. <laughs> so fascinating that it learned to do this. So one of the reasons why loggerhead shrikes are actually really a threatened population in many areas is because their habitat is quite unique to like open landscapes, prairies, and then they nest in like bushes within overall open landscapes. Native prairie is incredibly at risk because there is so much agricultural development through native prairie landscapes that a lot of the loggerhead shrikes habitat has been removed. So the best way to help protect loggerhead shrikes going forward in the future is supporting habitat conservation and habitat protection of native prairie landscapes in the Midwest and the prairies of Canada. Native prairie landscapes I think are critically underappreciated. They're incredibly beautiful natural landscapes that are often just confused with like wheat fields. Like people think the prairies sometimes is just agriculture. That's how closely linked habitat destruction is to agriculture in these grassland habitats. A true native prairie that is protected with native wild vegetation is going to be the place where these loggerhead shrikes thrive. So now to hear more species, let's go to Wanderlust and Future Ecologists to see what they have to say. To answer this question, I first want you to kind of picture in your mind what you think of when you hear the word seabird. Often you'll think of these vast colonies with hundreds to thousands of birds squawking and all being very loud and obtrusive and flying around the ocean and going back to the colony. And in many cases, that's a pretty accurate description. But there's a little known seabird and an animal that's almost a reclusive ghost in North America. And it's a seabird that was the last bird in North America to have had its nest location discovered. It wasn't until 1974 that the first murrelet nest was discovered. People had no idea where they nested and it was actually discovered completely on accident. There was a person who was doing some trimming of trees over a campground, these giant old growth trees, and they needed to remove some of the branches that threatened to crush the tents underneath. And when they went to one of these branches, they saw the this nest, this little indentation on this mossy tree branch, and in this indentation was a small speckled egg. And this is the egg of the marble murrelet. Marble murrelets are this bizarre seabird that has taken the complete opposite tactic of almost every other seabird species out there. They're an animal that will pair off, and during the nesting season, they'll lay an egg on these mossy old growth tree branches. They'll go from the ocean, bring in fish in the morning, fly with these small fish and feed the fish to the nestlings. And as a consequence of this lifestyle, they're unbelievably cryptic. They have this amazing camouflage, these browns and tans and all of these colors that when you have the light shining through the canopy of the old growth rainforest will cause the chick to almost completely disappear to the eye. The birds too are incredibly fast. Now they're about the size of a robin, so they're very small as well for seabirds. And so you combine this all together and it, it's practically this ghost of the rainforest in the Pacific Pacific Northwest. And so the marble murrelet is particularly important, not just ecologically, but because they're an umbrella species for a whole range of protections for old growth rainforest. In places like Oregon, where I've worked a lot, the vast majority of the rainforest disappeared due to early logging efforts where they didn't really think about the sustainability. They didn't think about the preservation of species like spotted owls and marble murrelets. And as a consequence, I will often walk through the rainforest in places where you have all these things 
thin, relatively young trees and just stumble upon these giant old growth stumps. And there's not a lot of old growth left in these places. And the marble murrelets, because they're an endangered species, can protect some of the remaining old growth that exists in places like Oregon. And that to me is incredibly important because it's this amazing rich ecosystem that has all sorts of species that you can only find where you have old growth trees. And the marble murrelet, this kind of phantom that I've been chasing throughout the last several years of field work, is a species that I think has the ability to protect those forests and I think is an amazing symbol of the wildness of old growth rainforest in the Pacific Northwest. One endangered species that is unique to my area that people outside of the UK might not know about is the Scottish wildcat. This is a small cat which is slightly larger than a domestic cat. Scottish wildcats are one of the most endangered species in the UK. Some scientists estimate that there are only 40 left in the wild. It is especially difficult to tell exact numbers due to the high amount of hybridization that occurs. Scottish wildcats frequently breed with feral domestic cats, thus producing fertile hybrid tabby cats, which are often confused for real wildcats. It is due to this hybridization that the wildcats' populations are declining at such a rapid rate, as wildcats are less likely to breed with each other, and so the genetic diversity of pure wildcats is also decreasing. The wildcats are unique to Scotland, yet some conservation efforts are trying to reintroduce them to parts of southern England, such as Devon and Cornwall, which is where I study. I believe it is important to protect this species because of what they represent. Here in the UK we have a severe lack of mammalian carnivores, the red fox, badger and wildcat being some of our largest, although the badger itself is actually an omnivore. If the wildcat were to disappear, rabbit and rat populations would increase, but more importantly we would have lost one of our largest predators, which would be a bad sign in being able to potentially reintroduce even larger ones in the future, such as the lynx. I explain more about why I think we should be reintroducing large carnivals such as the lynx to the UK on a video on my channel, so feel free to check that out if you are interested in the subject. Thank you guys for watching this video and thank you to my two biologists who participated and I will see you guys next time.